Good morning, and thank you for attending the National Democratic Institute's International Leaders Forum. Please welcome former U.S. Secretary of State and NDI Chairman Madeleine Albright, Dr. Dan Murray, Executive Director of Charlotte in 2012 Host Committee, and Kenneth Wallach, President of the National Democratic Institute. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Charlotte. We could not uh, be more excited to host you here today. I'm Dan Murray, the Executive Director of the Charlotte in 2012 Convention Host Committee. And Charlotte is so excited to be the host of the 2012 Democratic National Convention. We've been preparing for over a year and a half for your arrival and we hope that you will uh, enjoy the fruits of our labor. We have been particularly pleased to have a partnership with the National Democratic Institute over the past year, uh, Secretary Albright has made numerous trips to Charlotte and has supported our efforts on the host committee in putting this convention on and helping to build excitement within our community for what we were about to, uh, what we were about to see. She did a number of uh, public speaking uh, opportunities and if you go to the Mint Museum today, you can see that she's also shared with us her pen collection and I'm very happy to see that she's wearing the Queen City Charlotte pen today. We all know that Secretary Albright always does things for a reason. We're happy that uh, NDI could partner with our Chamber of Commerce on tours locally yesterday of our educational facilities, healthcare, energy and technology facilities. And I heard that you had a pretty good time at the reception at Charlotte Country Club last night. So thank you all for visiting our city and uh, exploring it so fully. But we're particularly proud of this series, which uh, is co-hosted by our uh, uh, co-hosted by the Charlotte 2012 Convention uh, Host Committee as well as NDI uh, and we're proud of it because it gives an opportunity to continue our theme of being open and accessible. We have opened up the majority of the seats to our public uh, as well as our partners, partners like the Mayor's Youth Employment Program. So you will see some of our high school students here uh, in the audience today who get to uh, enjoy this series. You'll also see our divas, which are an important affiliate group, the donors, volunteers, and ambassadors who, uh, who have supported our efforts in putting on this convention so far. So uh, we really hope that you will uh, take part, get a chance to know one another, and really enjoy this expression of democracy. I want to thank and invite uh, the president of National Democratic Institute, Ken Wallach, to come up and say a few words. Thank you. Dan, thank you very, very much for all your support and the partnership of the host committee uh, for this program. Um, on behalf of NDI, I want to welcome you to our International Visitors Forum. This is the eighth consecutive Democratic National Convention to which NDI has welcomed international guests. This year, you total 350, including current and former heads of state, cabinet ministers, speakers, and members of parliament, ambassadors, and political party leaders from more than 100 countries. We are honored to host you, and I would like to single out for recognition a good friend of NDI, a courageous and steadfast Democrat, and who won, who was a recipient two years ago of NDI's highest honor, the W. w. Averill Harriman Democracy Award and this Prime Minister Morgan Changarai of Zimbabwe, who is here with us. Um, it is appropriate that NDI should organize this quadrennial forum because it relates directly to the Institute's global mission to help strengthen political parties, civic organizations, safeguard elections, and promote citizen participation, openness, and accountability in government. Through all of the fanfare, a party convention is the manifestation of many of the attributes of democracy, party politics, competitive elections, and popular political participation. Given the size of this venue, we were fortunate to be able to extend invitations to a larger audience, from convention delegates to the wider Charlotte community, and we welcome you all. At the outset, I want to single out for appreciation NDI's Board of Directors and others who made all of this possible, 
the corporations, the foundations, and individuals who have been so generous in their support. And I want to recognize an extraordinary group of NDI staff members led by Vice President Sherry Bryan, who have worked for months to organize this very complex program. I don't think any of us can appreciate how challenging it has been. And many of these staff members have taken vacation time to be here and have worked literally around the clock to make this an informative and enjoyable experience for you. I want to single out for appreciation Mayor Fox, the Democratic National Committee Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, Frank Emery and the Charlotte Chamber of Commerce, Steve Kerrigan and the Democratic National Convention Committee. We rely totally on their engagement and active support. It should be a memorable week and through it all we look forward to deepening and expanding our friendships and partnerships. NDI, with a number of partner organizations, have organized a series of 11 panel discussions and so-called spotlight series. They range from political campaign issues to challenges that all of us in the international community confront. The program features many of the brightest political minds in America today, Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. Now, I have introduced Madeleine Albright to many different audiences and have found that it is not easy to do her justice. I can point out that she served as America's ambassador to the United Nations and as America's first woman Secretary of State four years after that. In those jobs, she provided a powerful voice on behalf of democracy, peace, and human rights. She traveled further than any previous Secretary of State and took time whenever she could to hold meetings far away from government offices. Her passion was to help people who most needed help, whether they were injured in war, the refugees, mothers with AIDS, victims of human trafficking, or trying to escape poverty. She brought a popular touch to American diplomacy, along with a conviction that the advancement of women is central to democracy, development, and environmental progress. She also has a deep commitment to freedom. How could she not? When she was still an infant, her family was forced by the Nazis to flee her native Czechoslovakia. When she was a young girl, her family was driven into exile yet again, this time by the communists, after which she came to this country. As an adult, Madeleine Albright found time to raise a family, earn a doctorate, and became a leading advisor to Democratic Party leaders, including two presidents. Few people know better than she what goes on at a nominating convention such as this. She has helped to negotiate and write political platforms. She has run around the convention floor with earphones and antennas jutting from her head, trying to persuade delegates to vote the right way. In short, Madeleine Albright's energy comes from the depth of her convictions about the value of democracy and politics, the importance of leadership, the possibilities for international cooperation, and the potential of the world to make progress. It is also appropriate that Madeleine Albright should preside over this program during the Democratic Convention. After all, as Secretary of State, she was the successor to Thomas Jefferson, the founder of the world's oldest political party. Unfortunately, as a naturalized U.S. citizen, she could never hold Jefferson's other job. It gives me great pleasure to, it, to present NDI's chairman, Secretary Madeleine Corbell Albright. Thank you very much. Good morning, and uh, there is nothing better than to be introduced by a really good friend, and Ken is an amazing partner in terms of working as president of the National Democratic Institute and his indefatigable uh, support for democracy in so many different places, uh, and his dedication is something that I am most grateful for, and I'm sure all of you are, and his partnership with Sherry 
and the amazing uh, staff of NDI. I'm, I'm truly, truly proud to be a part of this organization. And I, I want to join Ken in welcoming you to NDI's International Leaders Forum, in which we have invited democratic leaders from across the globe uh, to share ideas and to do so against the backdrop of America's democracy at work. And in that connection, I would really like to thank you, Dan, for your hospitality and everything that you have done to make us so welcome in Charlotte. I have loved coming down um, and uh, will continue to come down. Thank you for talking about my pins and uh, here I am. So uh, it, it's a, a wonderful place to be and Charlotte is an all-American city and a great place for our visitors to experience. We talked about the very international part of Charlotte and uh, it is terrific that we are able to be here. As is typical at these events, we have a very diverse audience, including our international guests and members of the NDI board and delegates and other convention participants, and then representatives from various local organizations and some people who might have just wandered in off the street. Uh, I, I do think that one of the things that makes this whole experience different is, in fact, to have such a number of different participants. Although the presidential nominating convention exists in, in different forms in different countries, it reflects a process of debate and selection that every democracy has to develop. Here in Charlotte, this week's events will feature the adoption of a party platform and major speeches by the president and vice president. In Ken's remarks, I'm reminded about my various roles um, in the Democratic Party and party conventions. And there was a time when I was uh, walking, I was on a foreign trip, and somebody said, how do you know you're going to agree with the Democratic platform? And I said, because I'm going to help write it. So uh, I do understand how that is done. These uh, uh, platforms and the speeches will be significant in their own right, but also as part of the larger spectacle of a US election campaign. Throughout the day, our expert panelists We'll share bipartisan insights on the prospective balloting and on the entire American political process, explaining how it works and why, and on occasion it doesn't perform quite as brilliantly as we might hope. From the beginning, our democracy has been a model for people everywhere who want to participate in shaping the rules by which they are governed. And this year will mark the 57th time that the United States has freely and peacefully chosen its chief executive. But our system is a living one, evolving over time and placing new demands on candidates and party organizations, the media, advocacy groups, and citizens. And we used to talk about an electoral season, but now everybody is exposed to what seems like a permanent campaign in which political maneuvering never stops. As someone who has traveled widely and who is absolutely convinced that democracy is the most equitable and effective means of government, I believe that the practice of freedom in America should serve in the future as the kind of inspiring example it has been in the past. It's the responsibility of leaders in both parties to ensure that this happens, but it's also our duties as citizens and voters. Ultimately, we all have the political system we deserve, and so I hope that we will not be shy in demanding the best. With that as prologue, I'm pleased to turn the microphone over to a man who throughout his career has challenged us to seek the best in ourselves and in others, and that is the talented and ever thoughtful journalist from the Washington Post, Mr. Eugene Robinson. <laughs> 